In today's episode, we're going to be ranking different sets of albums based on the quality from worst to best. So example, today we have experimental albums, we have mixtapes, we have debut albums, and much more. So if you guys are new to NFR Podcast, smash the subscribe button. And for our community, we just launched memberships. It's a massive move for the brand. Thank you guys so much for the endless support you guys show on these videos. Much love to everyone. And if you guys want to join, all you got to do is press the join button right next to the subscribe button. But Lou, let's get into this. First category is debut albums. So, the albums that we have for today is Please Excuse Me for Being Antisocial, The Lost Boy by Corday, So Much Fun by Young Thug, Die a Legend by Polo G, and The Melodic Blue by Baby Keem. Where do you want to go with this, A lot man? of these came out in 2019, which is pretty interesting. Um, I think we could agree that Die a Legend by Polo G is going to slot all the way at the bottom. I mean... It's not a slight, though. I think it is one of his strongest projects, though. Yeah, the production is just so lackluster in comparison to, like, all of these on here, so... Um, let's put Die Legend number five. Okay, then okay. number four. I would go personally. Please excuse with me. So for- much fun oh, by Young Thug. Easily, no, bro. No, I think really? when you look at all of these track lists, besides Die Legend, so much fun has the most skips on it. I do love Young Thug's amazing performances on songs like Big Tipper. What he did on Sub Made with Future was so unique. Mannequin Challenge with Juice World. I know. You have those massive bangers. But Even something like The London, that's a massive song Please as excuse well. me, though. It was an album filled with personality and soul. And, like, he's literally bringing the streets to church. He has the gospel-inspired vocals. It was so unique for the time that it came out in. And think about all the hits on that album, too, bro. Yeah, but you have Star hits with on me, so the much Box, PETA. Backseat, okay, listen, like, you know what? Uh, but we're going, please excuse me, you're being antisocial right after, though. That's the only way I let this slide. Mm. Uh, come on. it's yeah, okay. Please excuse me. He's not going in front of the okay, lost. Okay, I agree. Else. Okay, so so much fun. Fourth place. Okay. Third place, please excuse me. There and we now go. we have to decide between one and two. And to me, I'm not going to lie to you. I know you're not going to like this. The Lost Boy by Cordae is the best album on this list. That's a W. Really? That's a W, yeah. I didn't expect you to say that. Yeah, I'd go with The Lost Boy number one. I've, I think I've it's played... the most complete album on here. I mean, we've said it countless times on the podcast that we think this is one of the best debut albums of like the past like 10 years, low-key. Especially for a rapper coming up, songs like Lost and Found, um, songs like R&P, so much quality within the track list, a bunch of charisma. Cordae was coming out of the gates super hot and literally out of nowhere after that 1985 freestyle. So, I mean, I want to put a number one, but the melodic blue. I think could be in contention for number one as well. Shout yeah, out to it, it could be. The Melodic Blue is fucking amazing, bro. And uh, Keem definitely showed his range on songs like Scars and Issue. Even uh, Scapegoat was amazing. So um, pretty solid list of albums there. But next up, the category that we have is Grammy-winning albums. And we have Damn by Kendrick Lamar, Take Care by Drake, Igor by Tyler the Creator, Coloring Book by Chance the Rapper, and The Heist by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Um, the heist is kind of a waste on here. Like we could just fucking slot that at five. Yeah, yeah, I think that's an easy. Um, slot that's at an five. easy one. I think Coloring Book by Chance the Rapper is a bit overrated as a record. I don't think I that much it, prefer Acid Rap. I've been bumping yeah. Acid Rap over the past couple of weeks, especially that it's a summertime now. And uh, we were actually talking about a certain song in the Ox Battles and maybe want to go back and dive into the mixtape. I think it's absolutely clear of Coloring Book. I don't even think it's a competition, but I understand why people do enjoy the album. Do I think it should have won that Grammy? Definitely maybe, not. Maybe not, but so, let's put it at number four. Okay, number four. Now it gets tricky. Now it gets dicey. I know uh, how much you like Igor, but what I'm going to tell you is that I, I don't think it's going against that one and two. I, I don't think so. Igor, I, I, Igor is a flawless album to me. Like, if you know me and my take on Igor, it's a 10 on 10 album. Absolutely no misses. Um, Tyler's range, again, from the high-pitched vocals to the rapping to all... Bro, that's one of the best soundscapes I've ever heard. You're not going to convince me otherwise. I just want to know, where do you want to put this? Let's cut the mumbo jumbo. I would put Dam at three. I'm not going to lie to you. But are you putting it in front of Take Care? I'm okay with that. I, I'll, I'll compromise for this list. Okay. But, but we're not putting it in front of Take Care now. No, I, I'm okay. okay. We could do that. We could put Take Care at so one. So are you calling Take Care a flawless album? Do you think that Drake has two 10 on 10s in his catalog based on you saying that you think that nothing was the same is his best album? No, I don't think that. I think that Igor is better than Take Care, but we have to fucking sacrifice here, don't we? Yeah, that's true. I, All I, right, I fine. Think, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I think we're Igor do- is... Look, with, with Dam, you have a skip. That's why it ranks third for me. You have God, which is one of Kendrick's weakest it's a much ever be- performances. It's a much better written album, though. That's another Than thing. Igor? Yeah, absolutely. Sure, it's but that, that's not the only thing I look for. Like, no, I, I think the soundscape is God, superior yeah, better on Igor. Song- uh, yes and no. I mean, you still have soundscapes like Fear on there, even something like Duckworth, the chronological order of the track list. I mean, I can make major arguments for them, but that's fine. 
That's okay. As long as it's not like a GKMC or a type of a butterfly. Okay, so take there. care at one. We have Igor at two, Dam at three, Coloring Book at four, and the Heist at five. There we go. All right, we're seeing eye to eye for the most part. Next up, we have rapper producer collab albums. And this is where it gets tricky because we have 444 by Jay Z and No ID. We w. have Cheat Codes by Black Thought and Danger Mouse. Oof. Alfredo by Freddie Gibbs and The Alchemist. Magic by Nas and Hip Boy. And Unlocked by Denzel Curry and Kenny Beats. I feel okay. like with every single list that we've come across, there's always that one that we get automatically slot to the bottom. I mean, we, we, we know what that's going to be here, right? What would you slot to the bottom? You'd go unlocked? Yeah. Okay. All right. I thought you were going to go magic. I'm no. like, mm. but I would put I think, magic. I think unlocked is a project that, as much as I loved it and as much as I love the raw performances from Denzel on songs like Diet, it left you wanting a bit more. That's it true. felt super but it was meant short. To be that like it was meant yeah. To be a in lot that of format. these albums are short, to be honest. But yeah. that one sort of left me wanting. It left a void in me as a listener. You know. Okay. So my only thing is, I know where four 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 and Alfredo are going, but for cheat codes and magic, that's where it's gonna start getting a bit dicey for that number three. Yeah, it's really. Could tough. we agree on that? Yeah, absolutely. I think four 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 and Alfredo are gonna be one and two, but cheat codes and magic. I mean, what do you think you could argue about magic being better than cheat codes for? I'm going to be honest with you. I prefer the production on cheat codes. Same. Over magic. I think when it comes out to the song structure and what I take out of it, I do think that the highs are higher on cheat codes. Something like an Aquamarine, for example. One of the best songs of 2022. Or even Belize with MF Doom. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, yeah, that also kind of plays on the whole feature thing. I do love magic. I think it's absolute quality, but you could see how it was kind of like... Not an untitled and mastered format, but it was just okay. Let me pluck a bunch of these like songs out mm. that have super high quality and put them within the project. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think it's a knock to the quality of the project. I'm just saying like the cohesiveness of cheat codes was absolutely incredible. I'm still going back to the album to this. Well, day. I sort of feel the same way about essentially, you know, cheat codes and Alfredo in the sense that there's no real concept binding the songs together necessarily. But there is a certain feeling that you get when you listen to Magic. And to me, that gave me vibes of like 90s fucking it was written type of Nas for the first time I don't, in the I do longest agree with time. You, but I do think, I think it Cheat is Codes a... is better though. Yeah. Ultimately. Yeah, okay. All right. So I we're going to go Magic. magic. I have more replay value out of Magic. But ultimately, yeah. We're going to do um, uh, yeah, Magic at four, Cheat Codes at three. And then I think ultimately 444 by Jay Z's at one. Yeah, that's not debating. Yeah. We're not going to be debating we're that. We're not going to debate that. When was the last time you went through that album like that? It's it's the summertime. It's the perfect time. A couple weeks ago, bro. Yeah, it's Still. always it's always in rotation for me. Yeah, always in rotation for me. Okay, but let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to group albums. This one's gonna be super fun. We have Culture by the Migos, Speaker Box, The Love Below by Outkast, The Score by the Fugees, Beg for Mercy by G Unit, classic, and Saturation by Brockhampton. All acclaimed albums. Um, some of these won Grammys. By the way, is, is Big for Mercy considered a mixtape or is it considered an album? Pretty sure it's considered G Unit's like debut album. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because I I know they had a crazy uh, mixtape run and like the classifications for some of their projects uh, change over time. I'll but... be honest with you, this might shock you, but I'm gonna come out and say it right away. Speaker Box is not number one for me on this list. Uh, that's okay though. You're okay with that? I'm fine with that. I, I think the real tussle is between the score by Fuji's and Culture by Migos. And ultimately, I want to go Culture by Migos no, at number one. You got to go the score. It is a better rap album. I, I agree with you. I think for our personal listenership, not yes, only our but personal listenership, but for what it did to the culture, the way that it influenced the trap scene, the way that you have 13 songs that are all killer, no fucking filler whatsoever. Some of the yeah, biggest bangers of our there. decade. You have all ass on there. It's, listen, I gotta, I gotta call a spade all, a spade. All ass is not that bad of a song. It's a Skip. It's, it's an outlier. It's a, it's a major skip on the album. It comes at the end of it, but I've never heard anyone in our friend group be like, bro, play all last from Migos. We're not playing that game today. I'm sorry. I love the album. I, it holds a very special place in my heart, but there is no way that it is going over the score today. Yeah, and you are getting like li literally like Lauren Hill, the MC on this thing. Like she's not holding back whatsoever. Like, uh, it's an icon. It's literally a state. I don't even know why you were questioning this. What's going no, on because, today? Because, usually, because people people don't give culture the love that I feel it deserves. I agree with you, but it's not going over a state. No, no, I, I think and usually you're the lyrical miracle guy. And today I, know, I have to I check know, you. What's know. going on? No, though? we're going to put the score by Fuji's one, culture by Migos two, speaker box. Box at three, I think, is fair. Um, a, a bit of a bloated album, I'm not going to lie to you. And I think that you're getting... But you have your songs on there, though. You, of course I, you have And your I songs. like the concept that Andre has his part and Big Boy has his part in the studio album. I think that makes for a really nice dynamic for it. But I agree with you. I, I don't think that, at least for per, like personal enjoyability as well, I do put culture... It's an album that drags, and I feel like I wasn't like 
totally immersed into all of Three Stacks' singing performances. Like, I don't think that's where he strives best, and you were getting a lot of that on the album. So now between um, Saturation and Beg for Mercy. Oof, this is tough. I'm a big fan of the first Saturation. I am a huge fan of the, of the first Saturation, and Beg for Mercy, obviously, it has songs like Pop and Them Thangs and a couple of other bangers, but I think Saturation is more cohesive all throughout. I think I, it's more cohesive, but I do think that you do see the better rapping performances from G Unit on something like Beg for Mercy. It's also it's a massive debut album for the group as well, like you just said. I don't know, man. I think it's the a- production is also way more creative and way more, you know, out of left field, which was cool and it sort of just felt like a big refresher the time it came out. I would go with uh, with saturation above it. You know what? Okay, you budged you budge for the culture thing. I don't even know why. I well, I didn't like, really I, I didn't really budge. I was sort of debating it in my own head, like live in the moment, but yeah, what, what, what the fuck are we kidding, bro? Like, all it's right, a all right, all right. So um, let's keep going. Let's keep going with these. Go for the next one. Next though. up, we got 2018 albums. We got KOD by J Cole. We got mm-hmm. the Carter Five by Lil Wayne. Testing by ASAP Rocky. DiCaprio Two by Jid. And Victory Lap by Nipsey Hussle. Um, let's start off with the worst one on here. What do you I, think that is? I would put Five Testing. testing I, for me, Rocky. it's between KOD. Okay, anything between KOD, the Carter Five, and Testing could go at that five position. I don't mind what ends up placing between that realm. Yeah, I, I think that, that Testing by Rocky is probably uh, the bottom of the pile. I think so, though. Over, like, a, like cause, Over, cause, cause, you, KOD is something you're debating here, too? I, I'm debating a KOD. Carter have, Five, have, actually, like, though. Your- Carter Five had its fair share of skips. Like, not to say that it was a weak album. I think that it was deserving to be part of the legendary fucking Carter series, but, like... I'm sorry, but who's going back to like Wayne's daughter singing on that album? You know what I mean? Yeah, Come that's on, not for bro. you. Who, no, who's you're listening you're to Regine Carter, bro? Come on now. <laughs> she had a nice singing performance. It was, okay. it was emotional. It was a nice tribute song for her father. It was cool. It was nice. But I get where you're coming from, though. KOD, I think, has the better concept out of everything else on the, on this list. That's for sure. In terms of a concept, yes. Yeah, I, I think like we have to add points for that. Once an addict interlude, um, brackets, uh, just so many f- uh, window pane. Okay, listen. KOD is going to be going more towards the third spot for me. I yeah. think that's something I could decide. Okay, KOD third. KOD. It depends where else everything else ranks. Why are you ranking it in fucking third? Because place? then we're going to have so to random. have a discussion of the DiCaprio two and the victory lap. I, don't I know that's what's going to happen with the one and two. I know, but number five to me, I think it's the Carter five by Lil Wayne. I'm okay. not going to lie to you. Okay, I don't mind. You that. agree with that? Yeah, I don't mind that. There's songs like Demon and Mess towards the end that are just big skips. You're getting those like. Singy hooks Not by only Wayne. Not that, but testings are really consistent track. It is. The only, the only skip for me on the album really is Call Drops, for example. Yeah, which is not even that bad of a song. It's not even it's that bad of a song. quality and the mixing sucks, obviously, because it's a jail-recorded verse. But Okay, so um, so far we have the Carter 5 at 5. I put testing right above it. Testing at 4. Number 4. Fair? Dica- uh, not DiCaprio 2 or KOD at 3 now? This is interesting. I mean, DiCaprio 2 was just like... Jit flexing his fucking muscles, bro. That's really what it was. Um, and you got quality all throughout. You got shit like Hot Box, where you're getting an amazing fucking track. Yeah, from- working out off the Zoinkies, 151. Um, you know, mounted. Like, there's just too many fans. But it has a skip with Tide. Th- that's okay, though. You have a skip on KOD what as is well. It? Uh, what was that song again? I think it's Photograph? ATM. Photograph? No, it's ATM. ATM? Count yeah. it up. Count it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, that's a skip for sure. Um... Listen, the concept is richer for KOD, and I just feel like it was more important to the genre. Like he dropped it as a t- at a time where people needed to hear that message. I think you're getting better songs though out of uh, you are too. I-, I would go KOD. Yeah, number KOD three. is going to be number three. And honestly speaking, I think Victory Lab by Nipsey Hussle is one of the most underrated albums of the 2010s um, in terms of motivational hip hop, in terms of G funk and West Coast sound, and really modernizing that sound. There's not many albums that come close to it. For a long track list, it keeps you locked in all throughout. Amazing sample flip songs like Blue Laces 2, the storytelling, bro. Yeah, Hustle and Motivate. Yeah, there's a lot of fantastic Victory Lap, number one. So deserving of that Grammy nom. That is very true. You agree? All right, yeah. Listen, I'm completely okay with this list. I think that's a nice one. But let's go on to low-rated albums. (laughs) This one's going to be interesting. We have Come Home, The Kids Miss You by Jack Harlow. We have Mansion Music by Trippy Red. God Did by DJ Khaled. Lil Bo 3 by Lil Yachty and Good Intentions by Nav. All right, so let's work from the bottom up. All right. What's the worst? What's the biggest bomb on here? Let's say that. Um, I will say this. I, I, I do feel like Come Home, The Kids Miss You is probably going to take number one for me here. I, you think it's the best one out of everything here? I think it's So I guess best. we're starting top to bottom instead. I was you just, just looking at the list and I'm like, you know what? Let's throw Jack Carlo a bone here. So Honestly level. speaking, yeah, I low-key do believe that Come Home, The Kids Miss You is the best here. Um, 
There's definitely there's songs on there's there, songs, man. There's, there's songs. There's songs. There's, songs there's some on there. bops on there. Uh, we, we come on, man. We gotta we gotta start warming up the Jack. We have to. It was too much last year. That was year. such a horrible <laughs> take to put Jack in the top ten. <laughs> No, why? It's my uh, most played. Why would I do? Why wouldn't I? I just, I just think there's so many better albums when you have like two skips on a record. But anyways, that's a conversation for another time. But yes, come home. The kids miss you is probably the best out of all of these. Um, number two, I want to go towards Lil Boat Three by Lil Yachty. I feel like obviously, like all of the Lil Boat series, is um, you're not getting quality for the whole fucking thing, but you are getting songs like TD, which the features are kind of carrying it. Yes, but. Um, mansion music was awful. God did That's is not awful. getting any plays. Even the title track, bro, no. such an overhyped Jay Z. Yeah, verse. but the thing is, is that does that do something here? Does that title track like have a certain? Uh, does it have a pull? Does it have a certain pull here? Because you got to grasp at straws here. <laughs> you have to really grasp at straws here. I know. Um, I, I think I would go Lil Bo three though between that two to four position. So you're saying Lil Bo three and number number two, right? Because you had TD on there. You had Pardon Me with Future, yeah. which was a slapper. All right, let's go. Little, well, yeah, yeah. You know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's do it. All right. Little Boat, little boat 3 at number two. That's fine. That's fair. Uh, then num- third place is going to have to be God Did, unfortunately. That's for, sure. that's for sure. All right. Mansion Music or Good Intentions. Oof. There, um, there was a nice run of songs on Mansion Music at the beginning of the track list. But the only problem is, is that it's like 25 songs and they're all mixed and mastered horribly. They are. So what are you going? But good intentions. I'm looking through this track list. You had no debate with Thugger. You had Turks with Gunna and Travis. What's the song with the weekend again? I really fuck with that. I don't even think there's a song with the weekend on here. There's but no that's song? the point. It's such a forgettable track list. There bro. isn't. I couldn't even name a fucking single song on here. I had to pull up the track list. Are, are you sure we're looking at? The, maybe it's on the deluxe. Maybe it's on the deluxe, but um, maybe I'm confusing myself with another one. But regardless, though, yeah, you would want to go good intentions. I, I would go good intentions at the bottom and, and match music at four. Sheesh. Shout out Nav. Yeah. All right. So let's continue going on with this. Let's go on to trap albums. Heroes and Villains by Metro Boomin, Astroworld by Travis Scott, Future by Future, Pretty Girls Like Trap Music by Two Chains, and Flockavelli by Waka Flocka. Is Flockavelli going to be the sleeper pick that makes it to the top of this list? Is that that's um, the question? I would. Okay. Number five, I would go Pretty Girls Like Trap Music. I think that's okay. Oof. Because I, you know you have the blue cheeses, you have the four AMs, but for the most part, the rest of the track list is a bit empty to a certain it's extent. It's a vibe is amazing as yeah, well. Yeah, but you really only get like five to six songs. Good out of drank's it. another one. Yeah, there's but you, bangers. But you just need four songs though. You even spoke about it, how it was such an underrated trap album. It is. In your it's eyes. an underrated trap list, but I mean, like, I'm just I have to I have to like grade it. I have to put it in a ranking. I just don't know if it's better than Future by Future. Um, I'm looking through it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's fair. So, bottom of the list, Pretty Girls Like Trap Music. I think that's W. Now, Future versus Flockavelli. I think that's where we're at right now. And Flockavelli was such an epic fucking time for Waka Flock of Flame. That was his peak. You had crazy production from Lex Luger. You had Waka Flocka bringing in more energy than essentially any other trap artist around that early t- 2010s era in my opinion and it was also super dominant on youtube as well yeah he was dropping the heart and the pain videos and they were going absolutely crazy um a pioneer uh within the music space but future by future is just way too strong of a track list Oof. you have poa on there i know you have strong you songs have, you just you have draco i'm so groovy it's also Mask a very off. long tra- long track list you have songs like matter. extra love with yg you know you have that's like not, that's it. go to try and name me more bad songs on there I'm uh, telling you, Hide the Man's okay. Like, no. there's, there's a lot of songs where I'm Hide like, Hide the Man is good. There's a lot of songs where I'm like, these are average. Like, they're not like, no, when all I was prime broke future. is fire. I'm so groovy. Scrape, Mask Off, POA, Super Trapper, Draco, Zoom, Good. So, dope, what's wrong with Flock of Valley? What puts it above Fended Flock of Valley, though? I would just say probably like how much I enjoy Future by Future. I think it's one of his most underrated albums. I think it's up there with the 56 Nights and with the DS2 is just a tier below it. It's probably his last like really incredible album. Like what does Flaccavelli have over Future? I think it has the higher highs. Like looking at Heart in the Paint, looking at No Hands, um, looking at Live by the Gun, Fuck This Industry. Like I think I think the highs are higher and there's more anthems on Flaccavelli. So now we're in 19 minutes. You want to talk about long track? Okay, how long is Future by Future? Like 55, bro? Yeah, but I'm just saying... You're going to start picking at that straw, the length. It's too long of an album. Like, who cares, bro? But you just used that argument. You can't do that. You you can't, like, try and flip it back on me. How how did I use the argument? You just said Future's a long track list. 
I don't know in, why. In the sense that not everything everything bangs on it, though. Yeah, but not everything bangs off of Flock A of lot Valley. of it does. Anyways, okay, fine. Where do you want to go with this, bro? I would go Flock of Valley above Future. I don't care. All right, let's go four. <laughs> you just don't give a fuck. Okay. Right, let's go three. Astral World or Heroes and Villains? Oh, this is easy. One Astral World and two Heroes and Villains. Okay. I thought you were going to actually maybe uh, say something. Why? There. What are you, what are you trying to do? You're trying to get me like in hot takes and shit like that? I know. I don't know. You, you were speaking so highly of Heroes and Villains. I am. I think it is. But come on. Well, okay. We're not going to play stupid now. All right. Next up, we have album sequels. And we have five different albums, of course. We have 2000 by Joey Badass. We have the Marshall Mathers LP2 by Eminem. Only Built for Cuban Links Part 2 by Raekwon. AI Youngboy 2 by NBA Youngboy. And Bobby Tarantino 2 by Logic. Okay. Bobby Tarantino 2 is going down to the bottom. Mm. Actually, no. No, I think AI Youngboy 2 I goes at the bottom. Yeah, I think... I'm not sure if... Yeah. I, I know it's, the, I know it's yeah. the fan favorite album from YB, and you have, like, Make No Sense and other hitters on there, but Bobby Tarantino 2 actually had some fucking tracks on there, bro. That's true. You had the Wiz collab. You had, I think, 44 bars on that track list as well. You had a lot of heat, bro, on Bobby Tarantino, too. Yeah, pull up that track list for me before I want to pull it out just because yeah, pull, pull up the track he list was so spitting on there. Obviously, like, ba Bobby Tarantino 3 just ruined the fucking trilogy. Contra was a banger on there. Contra was In the Kabadu with Wiz. That's the song I was talking about. That shit's heat. Uh, 44 more. 44 bars was on the other one. Um, but that's another lyrical onslaught from Logic. Um... Yeah, I think I think it's stronger overall over AI Youngboy 2. Fine. I could get behind that. Okay. All right, so then four is going Bobby Tarantino 2. And three, I would put the Marshall Mathers LP 2. I agree with you. And now 2000 by Joey Badass are only built for Cuban Links Part 2. I could go either way with this. Bro, I ultimately think you're going to want to go only built for Cuban Links Absolute Part 2 on number one. Absolutely, bro. You're getting yeah. Ray and a lot of the Woo guys rapping over beats from Dr. Dre, Jay Dilla, The Alchemist, RZA, Pete Rock. Like, it's literally almost the most yeah. stacked producer list of all time. It really is. You're getting incredible songs like Cold Outside, um, Black Mozart, Bro, the Dr. Dre beats on this thing. Too. He, oh my god! Yeah, it's incredible stuff. Phenomenal, Brian. Fifteen what, what years year, later, two thousand nine. 2009, Fifteen years after the original, and it's almost as good as the original. When we were doing our best album from every year episode for uh, the two thousands, this was something I was seriously considering for the two thousand nine year. I was uh, yeah. going back through that year, and that was something I was going to put up against Most Def, and I was going to put up against Relapse. But all right, you see, we, we've been okay today. This has been interesting. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty good. Okay, next up we have experimental rap albums this is one of the hardest ones to rank we have all my heroes are cornballs by jpeg mafia we have x military by death grips some rap songs by earl sweatshirt xxx by danny brown and yeezus by yay um i think my hottest take here is gonna be that i have jpeg's album all the way to the bottom of this list i agree with you uh it's over x military's right? x military is actually it's going to rank high for me, bro. I, I went back to revisit the project, and you're getting some way more audible performances from MC Ride where you can it's hear okay. the lyrics. It's a lot more accessible of a project, but I'm just saying. Oh, it's, like, it's, where's the case? it's fire, this is my, bro. This is my world. In my world, I don't think that it's going over some rap songs. I don't think it's going over XXX by It, it goes bro. over Yeezus for me. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. It was such a groundbreaking album. Not only that, but I just I love the production on here. You're getting this mix of like garage rock being implemented with glitch hop. You have songs like Guillotine that are fucking incredible. Why is your face like that right now? Bro, I'm I'm not kidding what's, you. What's your revelation here? I want to know. What, what did you listen to in these past couple of days that let you oh, like lead you I, to this I, I, I was spinning the album, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, this is actually really quality. It's quality. But we have Blood on the Leaves. We have Bound 2. We have Black Skinhead. I don't care. We have New Slaves. The writing, the writing is not as strong for me. That That's one the argument that I can make. The production is much better. The production better. is not much is better. Much Absolutely better. not, no, bro. No, 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 no. Absolutely You do not, not. have the quality beats that you Absolutely do. Absolutely, you do. You what have way good more. At, what beat is good as Blood on the Leaves? Spread Eagle Across the Rock. Stop it. Listen, Lou, bro. You I'm telling you. It. Lou, I'm telling you, you bro. This, this album is so unique. It's like a fucking stop rebellious firestorm of an album. It feels like you're experiencing living through hell, bro, throughout the track list. I'm telling you. It's oh, fucking quality. Oh and I don't even like the money store. Oh. This project really fucking clicked for me. You look like you're about to have a fucking brain aneurysm. Come I on, don't bro. I how you could put this over Yeezus. Anyways, let's start off at the bottom, okay? We're not getting anywhere. Is, is All My Heroes Are Cornball is going to be the take for the bottom of the list? Um... Yeah, I, I I think so. I would have gone like, 
I'm not that big. At yeah, number five, eh? Because I, I'm just, I can't get into Death Grips' sound, no matter how accessible it is or how clean the mix is, no matter how good the writing is. It's just, it's that sound that kind of like, it, it feels like a hot needle just continues stabbing at you. Like, that's what it feels like when you're listening to this album. That's what it is. Maybe, be maybe my ears matured. I don't know what to tell you. Again, I don't like the money store, but this album actually, well, mixtape, um, really grew on me over time, and I, I have it over Yeezus. So, um, I personally, believe it or not, would have gone Yeezus at number four here. Um, what are you doing here, Lou? What do you have at number one? Let's start. Let's go that way now. I have XXX I by have Danny XXX Brown. I have XXX by Danny Brown at number one. Okay. I, that's my first ever Danny Brown album. Uh, I still think it's phenomenal to this day. I think it's just on the same level as quality as an atrocity yeah. exhibition. So, okay. Thank thank the Lord. Yeah, oh. we have the same number one. All right. Um, my number two is actually going to be some rap songs, Barrel Sweatshirt. I think it's one of the most creative albums in terms of its structure. I love the fact that it's him that, like, Earl sort of reached his, like, breaking point at a time where he was his most oppressed, grieving through the loss of his father and giving you these fragmented thoughts over these amazing sort of soulful loops that were also very melancholic. Like, just... Miles ahead of uh, everything the type, else. The, in the type of album that has scene. legitimately no filler. Yeah. Um. So some some of the best written uh, verses of the 2018 uh, year. So I mean, yeah, I I, I could see it. But you, uh, you uh, would put uh, Jesus uh, above I, I put it, right? Jesus. Yeah. Come on, bro. What are we doing here? Like, well, what are we seriously doing here? Okay, listen. We're not, what are we seriously? I, I, I'm not doing a double compromise for you on this. Okay, we have to do a one for one salat because my oh, order. Fine, fine. We'll, we'll do some rap songs at number two. But dude, if we're putting X Military fine. at number three, Jesus at number three, and X Military at number four, even though I don't agree with the claim, guys, you guys let us know in the comments. Okay, I'm sure most people probably would put Jesus at number one or number two, but. Um, I'm, I'm basing it on quality, but I'm not even basing it on personal preference. If it was just my bias and what I listen to and like more, yes, Jesus would be above it. But on a quality standpoint, I was Jesus truly amazed by X, X Military. Jesus still takes it. Um, it's one of the most unique soundscapes that an, an album has ever had in the 2010s decade. That, that That's for X sure. Military is way more unique. Um, let's keep on going to mixtapes. Still the last category. We have Faces by Mac Miller. Kush and OJ by Wiz Khalifa, Crit Was Here by Big Crit, mm -hmm. A Kid Named Cuddy by Kid Cuddy, and DC4 by Meek Mill. Um, I think that the bottom two kind of stand for, for what they stand DC4 for. DC4 and A Kid Named Cuddy? Literally DC4 number five, A Kid Named Cuddy number four. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I like that. I could get behind that. To me, the I, real I was, debate... I was going to be like, because sometimes you come in with these Meek Mill takes for me, and like <laughs> I get a bit worried, you know? So I don't know what you're going to go with. Uh, offended is one of the biggest trap bangers. The it last... is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a massive album, but I mean, it's definitely not over any of these. Crit Was Here could really make a serious push into the top two. Bar for bar, it's the best mixtape on this list. I think we can agree on that. Um, is it better than a Faces Bar for Bar? No, I, I think Faces is a better... Is a better Mixtape in terms of the creativity of the psychedelic production, Mac Miller's performances are more engaging, the distorted vocals, like everything was just on another level. And even the concept of Faces is genius. So to me, Faces is a number one lock. So, yeah. the, so the, the debate is between Kush and OJ. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. That Shout is. out Mac Miller. Um, the real debate is fucking Kush and OJ versus Crit Was Here. I think if you have to take like a biased hip hop fans like standpoint, like Crit Was Here was going to go number two. Because of like the the rap. I don't, I don't care. I don't care about like anybody else's opinions. What do we think is more quality? Um, Kush and OJ is such a vibe. It's a consistent, you know, sort of palette. Where yeah, you're I getting... would feel like I would. I would have nightmares putting this like below crit was here when I go to bed tonight. If I were to do that, <laughs> I would have nightmares just because like you know how much I enjoy this. But like now you were saying, oh well, ex military and Jesus. Well, personal enjoyment. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Could I do that here? So that's what I'm saying. No, because the, the rapping, the rapping is better. Uh, is much better on Crit Was Here. Production, you could argue, is better on Kush and OJ, though. Yeah, that's true. So you have that argument. The to higher make. highs. I mean, you do have stuff like the statement and mesmerized on uh, Wake and Bacon. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I, I want to go Kush and OJ at number cousin, two. I, shout out to my cousin Chris. I think it's a more iconic album. I think that it's just a staple for stoner rap and what that sound represents. So. That's the order. DC4, number five. A Kid Named Cuddy, number four. Crit Was Here, number three. Kush and OJ, number two. And Faces by Mac Miller, number one. Fucking Jesus, eh? Fucking Jesus, bro. <laughs> Did you wake up this morning and decided to like stir some shit, eh? I didn't decide to stir some shit. I just revisited the albums and I'm like, you know what? It's I, possible, I gotta though. call a spade it, a spade. It, it, it's possible, though. It's definitely not over Jesus. But guys, 
Let us know how you feel about our rankings in the comment section. And as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, we just launched our new subscription ships for our YouTube. It's all the premium memberships. If you guys want to join, click the join button right next to the subscribe. Lou, any final words before I send this off? Ex-military better. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> we'll catch you next time.